Good morning, students. Today's class, we will see about the contracted cephalopelvic disproportion and contracted pelvis. Contracted pelvis is anatomically or anatomically we can define. Anatomically, it is defined as one where the essential diameter of one or more planes are shortened by 0.5 cm. Obstetrically, it is defined as alteration the size and or shape of the pelvis of sufficient degree so as to alter the normal mechanism of labor in an average size baby. So, these are the four types of pelvis that is gynecoid, anthropoid, android and platypoloid pelvis, their inlet, cavity and outlet. Common cause of contractile pelvis are nutritionally and environmental defects like minor variations like common, major, remnant and osteomalacia. Disease or injuries affecting the bonds of the pelvis like fractures, tumors, tubercular arthritis, spine like kyphosis, scoliosis, spondylosis, coccygeal deformity, lower limbs like poliomyelitis, hip joint disease. Development in different like Negler's pelvis, Robert's pelvis, high or low assimilation pelvis. Rickets is predominantly a disease of early childhood when the bones remain soft and unossified. In childhood, changes occur in the bony pelvis due to weight bearing. Osteomalacic pelvis the deformity caused by softening of pubic bones due to deficiency of calcium and vitamin D and lack of exposure to sun rays. It is usually affect the woman after they have reached the period maturity. During the past couple of decades, there has been a gradual decline in the incidence of severe degree of contracted pelvis. This is due to an improved standard of living and nutrition in particular. But of significance is the presence of Fetal pelvic disproportion due to either to inadequate pelvis or big baby or more commonly with a combination of both. The past history like medical history, past history of fracture, rickets, osteomalacia, tuberculosis of pelvic joint or spines and poliomyelitis is to be required. The obstetric history while uncomplicated previous safe vaginal delivery of an average size baby reasonably excludes pelvic contractions. A history of prolonged and tedious labor followed by either a spontaneous or difficult instrumental delivery is suggestive of pelvic contraction. Difficult vaginal delivery ending in stillborn or early neonatal death or late neurosurgical stigma following a labor de la difficult labor without any um, other etiological factors points towards the contracted pelvis. Weight of the baby, evidence of maternal injuries, just complete perineal tear, vesicovaginal or rectovaginal fistula, if available, are of a useful guide. Physical examination and statue, a small woman of less than 5 feet is likely to have a small pelvis. She is likely to have a small baby also. However, this does not mean that a tall woman always have a good pelvis. Stigma deformities of congenital acquired pelvic bones, hip, hip bones and joint. Abdominal examination, inspection, pendulous abdomen, especially in primary gravida, suspicious of inlet contraction. Obstetrical in primary gravida, usually there is an engagement of head before the onset of labor. Presence of malpresentation in primary gravida gives rise to a suspicion of pelvic contraction. Assessment of the pelvis or pelvimetry. Assessment of the pelvis can be done by bimanual examination, that is, clinical pelvimetry or by imaging studies. Radio pelvimetry, computer tomography, and magnetic resonance imaging. Clinical pelvimetry is commonly done time the vertex presentation the assessment of done at any time beyond 47th week but better at the beginning of labor because of softening of the tissue assessment can be done effectively during this time. The procedures, the patient has to be empty the bladder. The pelvic examination is done with the patient in dorsal position with taking aseptic precautions. Following pictures has to be noted simultaneously. The state of cervix to not the station of the presenting part in relation to the scale spine. Does the cephaloclavic disproportion in a non-engaged head to not resilience and elasticity of the perineal muscles. Except extra pelvimetry. This is often limited value in the diagnosis of pelvic contraction or cephalopelvic disproportion. Apart from the pelvic capacity, there are several other factors involved in successful vaginal delivery. These are fetal size, presentation, position and the force of uterine contraction. Extra pelvimetry cannot assess the other factors. It cannot reliably predict the likelihood of vaginal delivery neither in breech presentation nor in case of the previous cesarean section.
एक्सरे पेल्वीमेट्री इज द पुअर प्रिडिक्टर ऑफ पेल्विक एडुकेशन सक्सेसफुल ऑफ वजे सक्सेस ऑफ वजे इन डिलीवरी हाउवर एक्सरे पेल्वीमेट्री इज यूजफुल इन केसेस विद फ्रैक्चर्ड पेल्विस एंड फॉर इन द इंपॉर्टेंट डायमीटर्स व्हिच आर इनएक्सेसिबल टू क्लिनिकल एग्जामिनेशन सीटी स्कैन इन्वॉल्व्स द लेस रेडिएशन एक्सपोजर एंड इज इजीयर टू परफॉर्म एक्यूरेसी इज ग्रेटर देन दैट ऑफ कन्वेंशनल एक्सरे पेल्वीमेट्री magnetic resonance imaging is more accurate to assess bony pelvis it is also helpful to assess the fetal size maternal soft tissues which are involved in dystocia it has no radiation risk so hence biologically safe it is expensive require more time and availability is limited ultrasonography is useful to measure the fetal head dimensions in the intrapartum phase disproportion it is defined as it is the relation of to the pelvis is a state where normal proportion between size of fetus to size of pelvis is disturbed the disparity in the relation between the head and the pelvis is called cephalopelvic disproportion disproportion may be either due to an average size baby with a small pelvis or due to a big baby with a normal pelvis or due to combination of both these factors pelvic inlet contraction is considered when the obstetric conjugate is less than 10 cm or greatest transverse diameter is less than 12 cm or diagonal conjugate is less than 11 cm contracted mid pelvis the mid pelvis is considered contracted when the sum of interstitium inter ischial spinous and the posterior sagittal diameters of the mid pelvis is 13 cm or below contracted outlet is suspected when the inter inter ischial tuberous diameter is 8 cm or less a contracted outlet is often associated with mid pelvic contraction isolated outlet contraction is rare disproportionate outlet may not give rise to a severe dystocia but may cause perineal tears mm. the head is pushed the backwards as it cannot be accommodated beneath the symphysis pubis as the head is the largest part of the fetus it is more important to know whether the greatest diameter of head passes through the different planes of the pelvis thus from the clinical point of view identification of the cephalopelvic disproportion is more logical than to concentrate entirely on the measurements of given pelvis as yes, fetal head is the best pelvimeter thus the, the disproportion may be limited to one or more planes absence of cpd at the brim usually but not always negotiate its presence at the mid pelvic plane on the other hand isolated outlet contraction without mid pelvic contraction is rarely thus thorough assessment of the pelvis and identification of the presence and degree of cpd are to be noted while evaluating a case of contracted pelvis diagnosis of cpd at brim the presence of and degree of cpd at the brim can be ascertained by following first clinical abdominal method and abdominal vaginal method imaging pelvimetry cephalometry by ultrasound mri and x ray clinical in multi gravidae previous history of spontaneous delivery of an average size baby reasonably rules out contracted pelvis but in a primary gravida with a non engagement of head even at labor one should rule out disproportion abdominal method the patient is placed on dorsal position with the thighs slightly flexed and separated the head is grasped by the left hand two fingers that is the index and middle finger of the right hand are placed above the symphysis pubis keeping the inner surface of the finger in line with the anterior surface of the symphysis pubis to not the degree of overlapping if any when the head is pushed downwards and backwards in inferences the head can be pushed down in the pelvis without overlapping of parietal bones of the symphysis symphysis pubis there is no disproportion head can be pushed down little but there is slight overlapping of parietal bone evidenced by touch on the under surface of the fingers which is thickened thickness of symphysis pubis moderate disproportion head cannot be pushed down and instead parietal bones overranges the symphysis pubis displacing the fingers severe disproportion the effect of contracted pelvis on pregnancy and labor in pregnancy general course of pregnancy is not much affected however the following may can occur there is small chance of incarceration of retroverted gravid uterus in flat pelvis abdominal becomes spindleless especially in multi gravida with lax abdominal wall malpresentations are increased 3 to 4 times and so also increased frequency of unstable line during labor the course of events in the labor is greatly modified depending upon the degree of pelvic contraction and presentation of the fetus 
there is increased incidence of early rupture of the membrane incidence of cord prolapse is increased cervical dilatation is slow there is an increased tendency of prolonged labor and in neglected cases of obstructive labor with features of exhaustion dehydration ketosis and sepsis there is an increased incidence of operative interference shock postpartum hemorrhage and sepsis maternal injuries the injuries of genital tract may occur spontaneously or following operative delivery there is an increased maternal morbidity and mortality fetal hazard syndrome fetal risk are due to trauma and asphyxia the net effect leads to increased prenatal mortality and morbidity management of contractor pelvis that is inlet contraction pre request in the formulation of line of management of contractor inlet is to be ascertain the degree of disproportion by clinical examination and supplemented by imaging pelvimetry due to consideration is given to the associate complicating factor minor degrees of inlet contraction does not give rise to much problem and cases are left to have a spontaneous vaginal delivery the moderate and severe degrees are to be dealt by any of the following like induction of labor elective cesarean section at term trial labor induction of labor prior to ex in the expected date of delivery induction of labor 2 to 3 weeks prior to the edc may considered only in case with minor to moderate degrees of pel cephalopelvic disproportion it is it cannot be forward nowadays however in selected multi gravida with previous history of difficult vaginal delivery this method can be considered 2 to 3 weeks before date in any case one should be certain about the fetal gestational age elective cesarean section at term this is commonly done elective cs at term indicated in case of major degree and moderate degree of inlet contraction associated with outlet contraction or complicating factors like elderly prime gravida malpresentation post cesarean pregnancy etc if there is no doubt about maturity of the fetus the operation is done planned the way any time during the last week of pregnancy in doubtful maturity investigations are done to ascertain the maturity otherwise the operation is withheld till the pain start and membrane rupture which are occur early trial labor definition it is the conduction of a spontaneous labor in a moderate degree of cpd in an institution under supervision with the watchful expectancy hoping for a vaginal delivery every arrangement should be made available for operative delivery either vaginal or abdominal if conditions arise aims a trial labor aims at avoiding an unnecessary cesarean section and delivering a healthy baby contraindication associate mid pelvic and outlet contraction presence of complicating factors like elderly prime gravida malpresentation post maturity post cesarean pregnancy pre eclampsia medical disorders like heart disease diabetes tuberculosis where facilities for cesarean section is not available round the clock conduction of trial labor the management of trial labor requires careful supervision and consideration following guidelines are prescribed the labor should be ideally spontaneous in onset but in cases where the labor fails to start even due date induction of labor may be done oral feeding remains suspended by and hydration is maintained by intravenous drip adequate analgesics administered the progress of labor is mapped in a partograph the progressive descent of fetal head and progressive dilatation of cervix monitor the maternal health fetal monitoring is done by clinically and or using external fetal monitoring if there is a failure to progress due to inadequate uterine contraction augmentation of labor may be done with amniotomy along with oxytocin infusion or no account should procedure be employed before the cervix is at least 3 cm dilated after membrane rupture pelvic examination is to be done to exclude cord prolapse to note the color of the liquor to assess the pelvis and once more and to note the condition of cervix including pressure on the presenting part on the cervix successful outcome depend upon degree of pelvic contraction shape of the pelvis flat pelvis is better than android or generally contracted pelvis favorable vertex presentation anterior parietal presentation with less parietal obliquity is favorable intact membrane till full dilatation of cervix effective uterine contractions and emotional stability of the woman unfavorable features are appearance of abnormal uterine contraction cervical dilatation less than 1 cm per hour in active phase descent of fetal head is less than 1 cm per hour in protract in means protracted active phase in spite of regular uterine contraction arrest of cervical dilatation non descent of fetal head in spite of oxytocin therapy 
early rupture of membrane, formation of caput and evidence of excessive molding, fetal distress. How long the trial can continue? It is indeed difficult to set an arbitrary time limit which is applicable to all cases. One should individualize the case so long, so long as the progress is satisfactory and the maternal and fetal conditions remain good, trial may be continued safely. However, if any omnivorous feature appears, trials to be terminated forthwith. Nowadays, there is a tendency to shorten the duration of trial. In spite of adequate uterine contractions, there, there is an arrest of descent or dilatation of cervix for a reasonable period in active phase labor is terminated by cesarean section. Termination of trial labor. Methods to termination any of the following spontaneous delivery with or without episiotomy, forceps or windows, cesarean section by 40% and however in significant cases the section is done even before full dilatation of cervix indication being uterine inertia fetal distress. Successful trial. A trial is called successful if the healthy baby is born vaginally, spontaneously or by forceps or windows with the mother in a good condition. Delivery by cesarean section or delivery of a dead baby spontaneously or by craniotomy is called failure of a trial of labor. Advantage. It eliminates an unnecessary cesarean section. It eliminates injurious use of premature induction of labor. Successful trial ensures women in the good future obstetrics. Disadvantage. Test of disproportion remains unproven when cesarean delivery is done due to fetal distress and uterine dysfunction. Increased perinatal morbidity or mortality due to asphyxia or intracranial hemorrhage and the trial is prolonged or ends in a difficult delivery. Increased maternal morbidity due to the effects of prolonged labor and or operative delivery. Increased psychological morbidity when the trial ends with traumatic vaginal delivery or in cesarean delivery. Mid pelvic and outlet precautions. In clinical assessment, it is difficult to determine whether mid pelvis ends and outlet begins. Moreover, isolated outlet contractions without mid pelvic contraction is a rarity. As such, in practice, two problems are jointly considered as outlet contractions. That is, the phallopelvic disproportion and the outlet is defined as where the biparietal suboccipital brachmantic plane fails to pass to the bispinous and anteroposterior planes of the outlet. Management. Unlike inlet disproportion, clinical diagnosis of mid pelvic and outlet disproportion can only be made after the head sufficiently comes down to the pelvis. Elective cesarean section. Contraction of both transverse and anteroposterior diameters of the mid pelvic brain or minor contractions associated with other complicating factors is dealt with um, elective cesarean section. To allow vaginal delivery, otherwise uncomplicated cases with minor contraction, vaginal delivery is allowed under supervision with a watchful expectancy. Molding and adaptation of the head and give the pelvis may allow the head to pass through the contractor zone. Delivery is accomplished by forceps or windows with deep episiotomy to prevent perineal injuries, especially with narrow pubic arch. Labor processes should be marked with a pathograph to make early diagnosis of dysfunctional labor due to disproportion. Oxytocin may be used to augment the labor for adequate uterine contractions. If there is no dilatation of cervix or descent of the fetal head after the period of two hours in active phase of labor, arrest of labor is considered once arrest disorder is diagnosed and delivery is the option. Thank you so much for listening.